Now it's time to write your own droid patch. Welcome back to the third episode of the video series about Droid, the Universal CV Processor. In the second episode, I've showed you how you can create a simple Droid patch and load it into your Droid Master. Now it's the time to have a closer look at what you can actually do in such a patch. Let's start by making use of the inputs. Each of these eight jacks is connected to a high precision low jitter AD converter, which can exactly measure input voltages in a range from minus 10 to plus 10 volts. They have an accuracy of one millivolt or better and are perfect for processing pitch voltages. But of course you can use them for any CV input you like, even such simple things as sending your droid a master clock or reset signal. Let's again use the LFO circuit for a simple test. In order to make things better readable for you, from now on I'll change two things. First, I'll not make a recording of the whole computer screen, but simply show you the patch we are working on on the right side. Also, I will use an editor that automatically puts nice colors for circuit names, parameters and values. In the second episode we had the following patch. We had an LFO circuit and we had its sign output being sent to 01. The frequency was fixed to 3 Hz. Now we want to change that and have the frequency being CV controlled. We do this by simply replacing the number 3 by I1, which means input number 1. Let's try it out. When we now load the patch, the LFO completely stops. Why is that? Well, um, if you don't patch something into the input 1, then it's basically 0. 0 volts means 0 hertz, and that means no oscillation. Now we use pressure points as a manual CV source. And we patch the output of the first row of pressure points to the first input of the droid. And now you can see if I turn the knob, the input LED indicates that we get some voltage. And if I crank it completely up, the LFO is running again at approximately 1 Hz. Strictly spoken, it's 0 0.8 Hz because pressure point outputs at most 8 volts. In order to try out the LFO, I've prepared a very simple patch. It's just one oscillator going into a filter and that filter goes directly to the speakers. So if I turn on the knob, you can hear the oscillator. We connect the first output of the droid to the CV input of the filter. Now we can hear how the droid modulates the filter cutoff. Let's talk a bit about voltages and numbers. The droid's CV inputs can measure voltages in a range from minus 10 to plus 10 volts. When you use a CV input in your patch, then this range is mapped onto the numbers minus 1 to plus 1. That means the voltage is always divided by 10 in order to get the number. Since the pressure point output 1 ranges from 0 to 8 volts, droid recognizes this as a number from 0 to 0 0.8. When you send numbers to CV outputs, the opposite happens. A 1 gets translated into 10 volts. Let's return to our simple patch. Here our frequency range was quite limited. Due to the maximum of 8 volts of the pressure points, we could get at most 0.8 Hz. But what if we want to raise that to say 80 Hz? Well, we can simply multiply the input signal by 100. This is done by adding an asterisk and the number 100. Let's try this out. As you can see, now the range goes way up. If you don't like that the frequency is completely going to zero when you turn the knob left, you can simply add a fixed number by appending plus and some number, for example 1, then the frequency cannot ever drop below 1 Hz. The general rule is that every input parameter can be multiplied once and added to once. The general formula is A times B plus C. In modular speech, you could also speak of attenuation and offset. That's exactly the same. Important to know is that the multiplication always takes place first and must also be written first. Let's look at some more examples. This is the line we had in our patch. It's a multiplication with 100 and an addition of 1. You are not limited to integer numbers, you also can use fractions like 88.5 or 1.2. Of course it's allowed to either omit the offset or the attenuation. Also negative numbers are allowed, 
In this example, the input CV is negated and multiplied by 20 and then added 20. And it's also very useful that all of these three numbers can be dynamic values like CV inputs. So in this example, you get the two CV inputs multiplied and the third one added. Normalization is a scheme that should be known to most of you from analog modules. Every input has a default voltage or signal that's being used when nothing is plugged in. Most times this is zero volts and that's also the default for the droid CV inputs. But in some situations other normalizations are more intelligent. Wouldn't it be nicer for our LFO if it wouldn't stuck to zero hertz when nothing is plugged in, but run at some reasonable speed, say three hertz? For that task, the droid offers a so-called normalization register for each of the inputs. These are output registers and called N1, N2, N3 and so on. Look at the following example. Now we add a definition for the normalization of the input I1. Uh, for that purpose I add a second circuit which is called copy. The copy circuit is very simple. It has just an input and an output. And it copies the value from the input to the output. So I define the input to be 0.5 and the output I send to the normalization register of the first CV input of I1. This means that if nothing is patched into I1, then it will be the same as I1 would have the value 0.5. Now load the patch and try out what happens if I now remove the cable. Now the droid detects that nothing is patched and defaults to 0.5, which results in a frequency of approximately 50 Hz. If I replug it in, I get back the CV control with the knob. By the way, if you plug the other side of the cable, it's not the same. Uh, this time the cable hangs in the, in the air and does funny things, so re you really need to unplug it here in order to get the normalization to work. The droid is really much like a modular system in a box. And that includes, of course, pulling in cables between circuits within the droid. This allows for creating really complex and interesting patches. But let's start simple. Let's make an example and start again with an LFO. This time we use a pulse wave. The frequency is up to 20 Hz and controlled via CV in, which we will patch later on to the pressure points again. So it's I1 times 20. As a second circuit, we add an envelope generator, which is here called contour. We get the gate from the input 2 and we output the resulting envelope to output 2. And we do not deal right now with any parameters like decay, release and so on. We just use the default values. Let's try out this patch. First, we need a cable from the pressure points in order to control the speed of the LFO, which is done at input 1. So if I turn the knob, I can speed up the LFO. The output of the LFO is being patched to input 2, which is the gate of the contour. So you can see at the red light how the envelope is working. And now let's patch the output of this envelope to our filter and open the volume a bit. This is nice, isn't it? But on the other hand, it's pretty dumb since we send out a clock signal at O1 just to read it in again immediately afterwards at I2. This wastes two jacks. So we better replace this external cable by an internal one. Internal patch cables have names. You choose. Just make sure that they start with an underscore. Look, let's go to this output one and replace it with an internal patch cable. I use the name mygate, so I write underscore mygate. I like uppercase letters for patch cables, but you can do as you like. At the other end of the patch cable, we want to connect this to this gate, so we replace input also with my gate. Now the square wave flows from this output to this input through the internal patch cable and everything should 
work. So let's try it out. Let's turn up the volume. And you see, now we can remove this patch cable and it still works. Internal patch cables are always automatically multiples, so you can patch them to as many inputs as you like. Look, let's make a second contour and trigger it with the same internal patch cable, which comes from the same LFO. What you cannot do, of course, is patch an internal patch cable to do different outputs, because that would basically be a shortcut. Here are the most important facts about patch cables. Internal patch cables begin with underscores. Each cable must be connected to exactly one output. Each cable must be connected to one or more inputs and you can have up to 100 internal patch cables. There's a small trick that can make your patches more readable. Instead of numbers, it's also allowed to work with voltages. Look, we have an LFO. We send the sign output to 101 and there's a parameter called level which sets the output level and if I set it to 0.5 for example it means 5 volts because we have learned that 1 is the same as 10 volts. So now instead of this it's also allowed to write level equals 5 volts. This uppercase V means that we refer to a voltage, so 5 V is exactly the same as 0 0.5. And there's even a third way of referring to 0 0.5, that's with using percentages. So the third way to write this LFO would be if you specify level being 50%. So 0 0.5 5 volts and 50% are completely the same. Just keep in mind that when it comes to multiplication, Droid works with the numbers, not with the voltages. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. And in Droid, therefore, 5 volts times 5 volts is 2.5 volts and not 25 volts. As a last topic in this video, I want to encourage you to use comments in your patches. They make your patches much more readable. Comments begin with hashtags and can be used either as a whole line or as an attachment. Look, we can add a comment here saying LFO being used as clock, or we can append a comment to this line, for example, same as 0 0.5. Comments don't use any memory in your droid because they are removed immediately while the patch is being loaded. So I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned, please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any further videos and keep on making great music.